Okay, test for question two on navigation. So in this case, we're using the diagram to find the direction that must be taken at each point to travel the route P to Q, Q to R, R to S. So the first point here is P, and we're going through over here to Q. So P to Q equals, grab our protractor and have a look. Line up zero degrees with north and make sure the middle of the protractor is right at our originating point, which is P. I look down on the protractor here, there is 90 there, so we have 100, 110, a bit more than 100, looks like it's about, say, 104. 104 degrees, so from north all the way around to heading Q, we're travelling 104 degrees. Okay, so the next one, we're travelling from Q to R, so Q travelling to R. So we start off at our originating point, Q, because I have a 360 degree compass, it's quite easy to go all the way around and then back this way to R, which is right over here. And in this case, we've got 250 there, 260 there. So we have something like 255, 256, 257, 257 degrees. And we just continue on that. R travelling through to S. Once again, line up with R. Look where S is, it's this direction. It's more or less with inside the protractor but we're really going 0, 10, 20, almost 30 we're going say 28 degrees possibly 29 I'd probably say that would be yeah I'd be happy with 28 and continuing on then, so from S to T. Hundred and ten, hundred and twenty, so it's about hundred and fourteen. Now the final one here, T to U. Imagine if I only had a one hundred and eighty degree protractor. So what I would do first is line up zero degrees with north. So imagine if I only have that much of a protractor. So it's still lined up with north. And I would be able to say, right, that's definitely 180 degrees. And we're going further because we're going from T through to U over here. So it's definitely more than 180 degrees. Now I could mark a line here like that. Move my protractor around. And count how many more degrees. Zero through to Let's look like 115, say 117. So that would be 117 plus 180. Okay. Another way to do it would be to assume that your protractor, half of your protractor, is going to be measuring, instead of from north around clockwise, we're going to measure how many degrees there are less than 360 degrees. And so what we would do is turn our protractor around. Once again, imagine if we only have half of that. And then we would start looking at going from here, 180. Either one of these measures, as long as it's incrementing, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, which is fine. In this case, I would actually get a value here of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 74, I'll just write that up here, 74, and so it's going to be 360 minus 74 because we've gone all the way around to 360 degrees, but we're actually taking back, because we're going anti-clockwise, we're taking back 74 degrees, and so that would be something like um, a 6... 
we got 186. Sorry, 286. 286 degrees. 286 degrees. If we have a look at this other one, 180 plus 117. That would actually give us... Sorry, 297. So 286, 297. I would have expected them to be maybe one degree out, but not 10 degrees. So let's just double check our work. First, we'll use a 360 degree compass. So we'll start off at zero with our middle of the compass at point T. Measure all the way around. And it was definitely 286. 286 would be our measure, which is that one. So let's revisit this one. So in other words, we said that it was going to be 180 degrees around to the bottom here, to this mark. And from that 180 degrees, I needed to add on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, so it looks like it's about 607 that we're adding on. So instead of 117, that should have been 107 which would have made us a 287. Once again, 286, 287, that should be close enough.